Shabbat Shalom, everyone. All praise to the Most High Yahuwah and Elohim through the Spirit of Yahusha Amashiach. This is your boy, your friend, your brother, French and West African Yashua. Today's topic, listen, investigation is going to be about self examination. Yes, I must put that in my spirit that I should make this video about self examination. You know, because a lot of us believers, most times we tend to judge people. But we should judge ourselves before we can even look other people, you know what I'm saying, wrongdoings. So, uh, let's dive into the scriptures. Let's see what the word of the most I said about self-examinating yourself. Yeah? And let's see if we are worthy to be called servant of the most high. And as I always say, there you go. Let's get it. So we'll start with uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. Yeah, 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own self? How that Yahushua Mashiach is in you, except ye be reprobate. So the key, yeah, and the purpose of this whole lesson, self-examination. Yeah, you need to make sure that what you're doing is in line with the word of the Most High. Am I doing the right thing? That's what you gotta ask yourself the whole time, the, the whole time, and every time. Yeah, that's the point I'm trying to make for this whole lesson. But I would expand on this whole thing. Yeah, let's continue. We want Galatians, Galatians chapter six, verse three, and we read: For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself, because a lot of us, that believers. Hebrews alive or whatnot, anyway, for that same matter, Christians sometimes, and most times, <laughs> yeah. We are here talking about, yeah, people are doing adultery, fornication, and they don't keep the laws of the Most High and all that stuff, you know what I'm saying? And then, are we keeping these things that we are speaking, like that we um, are blaming people to not keep, you know what I'm saying? Are we, yeah? So that's the thing that you gotta ask yourself, yeah? Because you cannot portray yourself to be something when in fact you're not that thing. You know what I'm saying? Because if you do, you're deceiving yourself. As the scripture says, let's continue. Yeah? We want 1 Corinthians, and we want um, chapter 11, verse 28 through 31. For 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 28 through 31. And I read, But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread. And drink of that cup. Let's keep going. Verse 29. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eating, sorry, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning Yahushua's body. So, once again, <laughs> if you examine yourself, your fruits or the things that you're going to do, people will see, you know what I'm saying? The way you're going to act, people are going to understand what, you, what you're doing most times. Yeah? Or should I say, the life that you're living will, will reflect the things that you do. You see what I'm saying? Yeah? So that's why if you drink, if you examine yourself, drink of that cup. Yeah? Because obviously it's good. It's good drink. Yeah? But if you're not examining yourself, yeah? And you, if yourself are a big hypocrite, you're talking against this and that, and then you're doing it yourself, <laughs> yeah? You're drinking damnation. You know what I'm saying? And that makes a whole lot of sense. Let's continue. Verse 30 now. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Yeah, and that's a fact. <laughs> yeah. Verse 31 now. Yeah. For if we will judge ourselves, we should not be judged. So, the thing is that if we are here to be liked, to be alike to the other people, whatever you believe, you believer or whatnot, or you are Yashara, Hebrews, and all that, yeah, brothers and sisters, we need to understand. If we are here telling people this and that, don't do it, yeah, we should not do it ourselves. Because we are in the position, yeah, when we're serving Salam Osha, we are in a position where we can tell and we should and we have to tell people that what they're doing is wrong, right? Or what they're doing is not what the Most High is meant to be like. But we can't do those things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because then we put ourselves in the same batch as them. <laughs> Does that make any sense? Yeah? Alright. 
let's keep it moving now we want um Galatians chapter 6 we want verse 4 Galatians chapter 6 verse 4 but let every man prove his own work and then shall have rejoicing shall he shall, shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in others so that's one thing you never compare yourself to others <laughs> you know what i'm saying we all each individual and different one two yeah once again we have to prove ourselves to ourselves yeah because self-examination is reflecting on the things you do you know what i'm saying it's a uh, it's kind of like meditating on things that you do you know what i'm saying yeah or meditating on yourself if you want yeah although I don't want people to come in conversation talk nonsense. We are to meditate on the word of the I know that. Yeah. But meditating on the things that you do, it is meditating on the word of the most high because the word of the most high tells you to meditate on the things you do. So here you go. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, because I know some psychopath from comment section and all that stuff. Chapter 10, verse 12. So 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Yeah. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Yeah, and that's one thing, yeah. You see, when I see you Hebrews are like campers on the street corner talking about, oh, white people are going to burn you, eat them, I, da 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 da. When the monster comes back, watch, da 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 da. First of all, white people are not eat by it. One. Two, because you're on the street corner or you join the camp or you're wearing your beard and then you have a fringes or whatnot you think that you're going to be saved the day of, of the most high the day of judgment yeah or because you're Israelite <laughs> nah and that's the same way of thinking that this Christian has you see so you're not different than them yeah the same way of thinking because they're baptized or whatnot and they go to church on Sundays and they pay tithes that really and truly they're not even supposed to pay you know what I'm saying they think that they're going to be saved and they're better than everybody no, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. And this scripture is for people like that. Yeah, and I'm be honest with y'all, I've been through it. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I'm doing this lesson because people need some self examination. You gotta think, yeah, or should I say, you gotta rethink on the things that you do. Because you can't be thinking, yeah, it's all good, I'm good, I'm good, yeah, I'm righteous, I'm so perfect. No, this is reality. Yeah. And that's why we need self-examination in this lesson it's a must and i wanted to do it i was supposed to pull out the marriage thing but that is a must because the last days yeah especially with these people out there dropping up viruses on people or whatever or i don't know if you think it's a hoax or what hoax or what but anyway yeah we need some self-examination because the time of the most is coming sooner than we think i'm not talking about today or whatever but i'm saying sooner than we think so you better be in line with the word of the most high because we want to be safe yeah and one last thing i would say nobody got a passport for heaven or the kingdom of yahoo should i say yeah let's continue you want uh matthew matthew yahoo <laughs> matthew chapter 23 yeah verse 12 and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted so <laughs> you see humility yeah because all these things self-examination and you know like uh, judging others or whatnot you know they're all in the same bag humility you know humbleness and all that yeah they're all in the same bag yeah and these are requirement for righteous people yeah to understand that once I once were there you know what I mean and that's the approach that we should take when we talk to our people or we talk to anybody that's still in scene or whatnot yeah not talking like from pedestal like you know what I'm saying yeah look at these people no <laughs> yeah and that's why self-examination is needed yeah because you're gonna know how to walk we can make mistakes the heart makes mistakes that the mind doesn't even know you know what i'm saying yeah so, so let's continue yeah you want to proverbs proverbs 29 verse 23 
Proverbs 29 verse 23. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall upload the humble in spirit. Because one thing I like to say once again for the Christians out there, yeah, the Old Testament and the New Testament, they were saying the same thing. They all believed in the same thing. So when you devils are talking about this world you don't know where we live, you don't make any sense. Yeah? Let's continue. Yeah, and I don't even want to expand on that verb because you should be supposed to understand that they were saying the same exact thing right now. Yeah? Let me give you a precept. Psalm chapter 138, verse 6. Though Yahuwah be high, yet have he respect unto the lowly, but the proud he knoweth afar off. So, when you think that you're something, you're really and truly you're nothing. Yeah? So the Most High regards and looks upon humble people. Self-examination. Yeah? Humble people, the one that don't think that better than everybody. Y'all see what I'm talking about? Yeah? Okay. Let's continue. Uh, James chapter 4. Yeah, James chapter 4. Everyone verse 5 to 6. Do ye think... That the scriptures say if in vain the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy verse 6 now but he giveth more grace wherefore he saith Elohim resisteth the proud but giveth grace unto the humble yeah that's one more shot to our Christians out there because it's quoting scriptures right here yeah <laughs> so once again yeah Self-examination, knowing your place, yeah? Yahuwah regards people that are humble, not people that are proud and saying that they're perfect or whatnot, and in reality, you're just another creep. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah? Let's keep it moving. And we want Matthew chapter uh, 7, verse 1 through 5. Matthew, Matthew, chapter 7, verse 1 through 5. Judge not. And that's one that people like to use to say, oh, you can't judge me for what I do. But that leads to a lot, a lot of evilness. Because if you can't be judged, you know, uh, saying that you should not be judged, yeah, is actually judging. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But anyway, that doesn't make any sense. So let me continue. Judge not, that you be not judged. Yeah? You're gonna read the whole thing. For we want judgment ye judge, huh? Ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye met, it shall be measured to you again. So that's the whole thing. Yeah, that's why I read the whole thing, a lot of a whole bunch of precepts before that. For us to understand that. Yeah, because self-examination. Yeah? You can't be out here talking about people and then you're doing the same thing that I did you talking to people about. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, that's literally what they're saying is right here. Yeah? Let's continue. <clears throat> There's three now. And why beholdest thou the mark that is in thy brother's eye? So why is you telling people, oh, Look at that, you dress like a prostitute, da, 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 you know what I'm saying? When, in fact, <laughs> yeah, you the big prostitute. Because she might dress like a prostitute, but you, you married, yeah, and then you sleeping around and all that stuff. I mean, that's an example, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but there are people like that out there. <laughs> yeah, I know that for a fact, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> let's continue. But consider not the beam that is in thy own eye. So you got bigger problems than the people that you're judging. You know what I'm saying? Yeah? So you ain't even trying to sort out your own problems, but you want to talk about other people's problems. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Let's continue. Verse 4 now. Oh, how will thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mount out of thine eye. And behold, the beam is in thy own eye. So, <laughs> excuse me, y'all. So, like a lot of us, if not the majority of us, we are here talking about, we should repent, 
Keep the love of the most high. Look at this evens. They they doing all of this and that. Yeah, they eating pork and shrimps and all of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? But like, for example, yeah, you be you be saying that, talking about these even and doing that. But you, you're probably in fornication, which is even worse. You know what I'm saying? Yeah? Like, for another word, you having sex before marriage. Or you know or you be having uh, sex with multiple personal partners and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah? But then you wanna get mad because that person is eating pork. Yeah? I mean not that any of these <laughs> is good, but that doesn't make any sense. Like y'all both in the same boat. Y'all both sinners. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's an example, like, just with what they were we, we've been told right here in, in that scripture. Yeah? Let's continue. Let's five now. Thou hypocrite! First cast out the beam out of thine own eye. So sort out your problems first. Self-examination. Check yourself. Before you want to even go and tell people anything. In regards to what they do wrong or right. Yeah? Okay, let's continue. And then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mouth out of thy brother's eye. Yeah, it's like the blind leading the blind. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, can you imagine that? Like you blind yourself and you're like, man, let me help you because I know that you blind. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, can you see the this scenario right here? Yeah, a blind trying to a blind trying to lean. Sorry, a blind <laughs> trying to lead a blind. Make no sense. So if you know that make no sense, you should self examine yourself. Yeah. All the time. So you're not going to be a blind leading another blind. Let's keep it moving. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. You want Romans chapter 2 verse 19 to the 25. And I like that one. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's read. Romans chapter, like, chapter 2. Sorry. Verse 19 to the 25. And art confident that thou self, that thou self art a guide of the blind <laughs> yeah and a light of them which are in darkness so so once again we're being told right here by apostle shahu that we should be yeah a guide <laughs> of the blind yeah so we should not even help we should help people you know what i mean <laughs> yeah and then that we should be a light of them that are in darkness we should have the torch in our hand. You know what I mean? Yeah? Let's keep moving. Verse 20. And an instructor of the fool, foolish. A teacher of the babe. Which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah? We are Christian. We are saying, Paul said the last better way we da, 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 da. We are under grace and all that stuff. <laughs> Y'all yeah, should really read some Romans chapter um, 1 all the way through to the end. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, to the other chapters and all that. Yeah? And I stop at one or two verses. Yeah? Anyway, that's not for another day. I don't even want to talk about it. Let's keep moving. Verse 21. Thou therefore, which teacheth another, teacheth thou not thyself. Here we go. Because a lot of us. A lot of us will be out here telling people, yeah, this and that. And we're talking all of these beautiful words like on YouTube, you know what I'm saying? Just like me right now. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Doing that very lesson. Yeah? And then not even able, able, not even able to, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, examine myself. That makes no sense. <laughs> but anyway, let me continue. Yeah? So yeah, I need to be, I need to be serious because sometimes I'm <laughs> getting out of the board. But yeah. Anyway. Let's pick up again. Yeah? Mm. So, verse 21. Thou therefore which teacheth another, teacheth thou not thyself, thou that preachest, a man should not steal, those that steal. So, <laughs> can you imagine you be out here like these pastors and all that stuff talking about, you shouldn't be doing this and that. Fornication is a sin. Yeah. 
the spirit told me <laughs> you know what i'm saying by this time my man is trying to get this other guy's wife or these new girls that's coming to the church you know what i'm saying <laughs> so <laughs> that doesn't even make any sense y'all yeah we should not be like these very people that we're criticizing that's the goal you know what i'm saying yeah verse 22 thou that sayest amen should not commit adultery does that commit adultery <laughs> what i was just talking about right now yeah let's continue thou that um abhorrest idols those that commit sacrilege you know what i'm saying yeah i mean it makes, it makes a lot of sense like come on you know what i'm saying like we don't want to be hypocrites yeah verse 23 thou that makest thy boast of the law through the breaking of the law dishonoreth thy elohim mm -hmm. for the name of elohim is blasphemed among the gentiles through you as it is written yeah that's extremely important right, right, right now because when some when for example yeah when us like hebrews or like or whatever you want to call yourself yeah when we are telling people oh don't do this don't do that you see like me when i'm at work most times when i'm talking to our people yeah because i work most time with our people you know what i'm saying just with our people when i talk to them i always try to tell them look you should have different views you know what i'm saying like people come and preach us sometimes even though I'm not even trying to do that because you know people who hate the when you, you know, tell them what's wrong or what right but you know like most time I tell them school people you know what I'm saying like I tell them nah you know you shouldn't be you should have different views on that you know what I'm saying like sex before marriage and all that stuff you know what I mean like you know what I'm saying like I try to tell people most times in a decent manner you know what I'm saying or in a way that they can understand yeah but can you imagine I'm telling people and then they see me doing the same thing or the very thing that I'm telling them that I do. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm telling them, oh, like, you should not be a drunk man. No, it's not good, bro. You should watch how you, you do you do with your stuff. Then don't drink like that. Da, 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 da. It's not good to be an alcoholic. But then me, I'm smoking the most cigarettes the whole day. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, come on. Yeah? But anyway... <laughs> so when people see you doing these things then it becomes a bad thing because you are portraying yourself in the light as, as oh I'm a servant of the Mosah or I'm a believer and all of that stuff but then what you're doing is contradictory to what you believe literally yeah so self-examination humbleness so far yeah and not being like the very people that we're judging <laughs> you know what i'm saying that's the goal yeah let's continue verse 25 now yeah still in Romans chapter 2 verse 25 for circumcision fairly profitive if thou keep the law but if thou be a breaker of the law that circumcision is made on circumcision yeah so literally yeah i can put it in in the same sense as look you say you saved or whatever, like for your Christians or whoever, yeah. But then, if you still struggling with sin, yeah. All of this, I'm a new creature and all that stuff makes no sense. You're not a new creature. You're an old creature. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't make sense if you doing the same sin that you say you're against. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But anyway, let's keep it moving. Yeah. We want an Ecclesiasticus, yeah, or Sirach, yeah, chapter 18, verse 20 through 21. So Ecclesiasticus, or Sirach, chapter 18, verse 20 through 21. Before judgment, examine thyself. <laughs> and in the day of visitation, thou shalt find mercy. Yeah, so the day of visitation, obviously, is the end day, the end game, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, judgment day. Yeah, so. In that day, we will, we will find mercy because we'll be counted as righteous people. Why? Because we've been examining ourselves in the sense where we've been watching where we're walking. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's extremely important. I might be laughing and making some jokes, yeah, but this lesson is extremely important because your life is on the line. Yeah, believe me, y'all. And it's a thing that I struggle too with a lot. Yeah, 
I was out here telling people, don't do this, don't do that. And I found myself doing this very, very scenes that I was telling people to not do. You know what I mean? And it's extremely important to, should I say, um, understand these things. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and once again, examining yourself. Yeah, because if you just think that you're riding and then <laughs> ain't no problem with your car, yeah, if you don't do no checking up and all that stuff, one time your, your car may broke down, you know what I'm saying? And then all this time you should have checked your car and it's the same concept. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You that same car. You are that car. So check yourself. Yeah. Let's keep moving. Verse 21. Humble thyself before thou be sick. And in the time of sins, show repentance. Yeah. So once again, self-examination is extremely important. And you see, humbleness, and judging, and I mean, not judging people if you are not perfect or whatever, is the same thing that the whole people say through the scriptures. Yeah. So proving further that the Old Testament, the Apocrypha, and all that stuff, they all saying the same thing. They were all they were all guided by the by the uh, Ruach Hakodesh. You know what I'm saying? Or the Holy Spirit. Yeah? And all these things are scriptures. Yeah. Just for you devils out there that's trying to say the Old Testament is not scriptures or the New Testament is not scriptures or the back of it is not scriptures. Just put that for y'all, yeah? <laughs> so, you want to jump up, yeah? And we want um, Ecclesiasticus chapter 18 but verse 27 now. Yeah? Let's see right chapter 18 verse 27 now. A wise man will fear in everything, and in the day of sinning, he will be beware of offense. But a fool will not observe time. So, what we're talking about right there, and yeah, that's what I was explaining, if you're not checking on yourself, if you're not self examining, yeah, you're a fool. <laughs> that's literally what it is. Yeah? It's like cooking and not checking what you're cooking. Like, imagine you put something in the oven, yeah, and then you're just not checking it. You gotta check it, cause if you ain't checking it, yeah, it might be, it might be, it might, it might be burned. You know what I mean? So it's the same concept with this truth, yeah. Regardless of what you believe, if you believe in the script, scriptures, yeah, you gotta do some self-examination, yeah, because in the time where sin are exposed then you'll find repentance anyway let's keep it moving yeah still in Sirach or should I say Ecclesiasticus but this time we want chapter 37 verse 19 so Ecclesiasticus or Sirach chapter 37 verse 19 yeah and we read there is one that is wise and teacheth many mm-hmm and yet is unprofitable to himself. <laughs> so you got all these beautiful words like I was saying earlier. You say all these beautiful things. You talk and people say, man, this guy, he got good advice and all of that. Nah, nah, nah. On your YouTube channel, you're talking all of that stuff and people coming. Yeah, this lesson has been an eye-opener for me. Da, 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 da. But really and truly, if they saw you behind closed doors, you ain't living this, this life. You ain't about that life. Now me, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> watch yourself, y'all. You don't want to be counted among these hypocrites. Please, we should watch ourselves as much as we should watch other people and tell them and reprove them. We should reprove ourselves most time. Yeah, as Richard said, keep moving. <clears throat> Exeticus now, and we want chapter in chapter 19 or right, this one, verse 24. So, Ecclesiasticus or Sirach chapter 19, verse 24. He that have small understanding and fear of Yahuwah is better than one that hath much wisdom and transgresses the Torah or law of the Most High. That has been the whole thing right here. You know what I mean? Yeah? Because we were told that there's one that's wise, that teaches many, but can't even help himself. Yeah? 
in there right here we've been told that the ones that keep the law you know what I'm saying literally yeah they're more important than the people that have the knowledge because people who can know but I don't mean that they practice it you know what I mean yeah so it's the whole thing that they're trying to say right here yeah so he that has full understanding you do not you don't need to be to have the whole knowledge yeah but the ones that have more understanding are better than the ones that are breaking the laws. Does that make sense? Yeah? <laughs> Alright. Let's keep it moving. Yeah? So self-examination. That's the key. Yeah, we want Hebrews now. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. If we understand through Torah. Yeah? Or should I say, through telling him or Psalms that Torah is the truth, right? Anyway, let's keep moving. Yeah, receive knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. So that's extremely dangerous. If you know the most high and all that stuff, you know the truth, yeah? You, whatever you're serving the other most high or whatever, yeah? You need to be careful. Because if you already have the knowledge and all that, that means that you are doing it willfully. Meaning there's no excuse to say, oh, I didn't know, da, 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 because you knew. And you know better than the others. Yeah? So, <laughs> careful on what we're doing. Yeah? We might continue to uh, verse 20, 20, uh, 33, 31. But uh, I'll check it. Yeah? So Hebrews 10, verse 27 now. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fear so in fear fearfully any nation which shall devour the adversary. Verse 28 now. Yeah. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy. And sorry, under two or three witnesses. Yeah. Verse 29. Of how much more sorrow punishment. Suppose ye shall he be thought worthy, who have trotted under the foot of the Son of Elohim, and have contained the blood, so counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified, an unholy thing, and have done despite unto the Spirit of grace. So the whole thing what he's trying to say is that you being selected among the chosen people literally yeah you've been saved on the grace you know what i'm saying taken away from darkness but if you sin after that that's extremely dangerous because you already been like you got the grace because you was already bad then the most high pity on you and took it took took you yeah but then you continue in your bad things after being saved, you know what I'm saying? Or after being taken away from the badness. So, what more can we do? You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? That's the whole thing right here. That's what they're trying to tell us, literally. Yeah? Sorry if I didn't read it properly. <laughs> yeah? So, let's keep it moving. Verse 30. For we know him that have said, Vengeance belong unto me. I will recompense, saith Yahuwah. And again, Yahuwah shall judge his people. So, once again, that's two words in one song right here. Because you're told that the Most High said, Vengeance is mine. So, even if he, the spirit of grace is all is, 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 is around the world now and all that, you know what I'm saying? That doesn't mean that you can do whatever you want because you're going to repay at the end. And then you're told that the scripture says that. Yahuwah shall judge his people. So imagine, even Yahuwah is judging his people right now, yeah? Because the one that child called Negroes is the Israelite, basically, yeah? And he's judging us right now. That means that he ain't gonna have a mercy on you. Because he's judging even his people. You know what I'm saying? The one that he say he loves and all that. Yeah, so, once again, this ain't no games. Self examination. You got to know where you're standing, yeah? With the Mosai right now because you don't want to be doing some madness literally yeah so self checkup self 
examination. I'm not gonna say that the whole time. If you're not happy with that, you can skip my YouTube channel. But this last thing is about self-examination, and I see a lot of people don't do it. Yeah? Let's continue. It's 31 now. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living Elohim. You know why? Because this time you're portraying yourself as a light, yeah? Or you've been brought into the light and you're bringing darkness into this light. That's extremely dangerous. That's why we've been told right here in Hebrews to watch ourselves, literally. Yeah? Let's keep moving. Stay in Hebrews. We're on chapter 6 now, verse 4. So Hebrews 6, verse 4 through 6. Yeah? For it is impossible. Sorry, it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partaker of the Ruach HaKodesh. So the Holy Spirit. Yeah, it's impossible. Let's continue. And have tasted the good word of Elohim and the power of the word to come. Verse 6. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they sacrifice to themselves the son of Elohim afresh and put him to an open shame. Yeah? So he's saying... That will make sense, yeah. That yeah, that 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 supposed to be saved, yeah, fall into sin again. Cause they ain't no coming back really and truly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This can't be like, oh yeah, you gotta take another chance. Nah. Especially if you're being saved, if the spirit has touched you. You know what I'm saying? And that's why we need this lesson about self-examination. Because if you're not self-examining yourself, <laughs> yeah, who's gonna do it? You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, so once again, you need to be careful what we're doing. That's literally what it is. Yeah, let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Um, Matthew, Yahoo or Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. For I say unto you. That except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven. Yeah? That is extremely dangerous right here, what we've been told. Because literally, yeah, he's saying, don't be like the Pharisees at all. Yeah? Because the Pharisees were like that. They were the ones telling people off all the time. But at the end of the day, they were the corrupt ones. You see what I'm saying? So, y'all Christians out there talking all this stuff about the people and say you follow Jesus or whatnot. But really and truly, if he was here right now, yeah, it'd be on to you. Telling you that you like the Pharisee, literally. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah? And same thing for a lot of you, it was like right there. Yeah, so, you know. <laughs> gotta be careful yeah because the cost of you not self examining yourself is not going to heaven literally so you better yeah let's keep moving Romans chapter 10 verse 2 through 3 yeah for I bear them record that they have a zeal of Elohim but not according to the knowledge. Verse 3. For they being ignorant of Yahuwah's righteousness. And going about to establish their own righteousness. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Yahuwah. Yeah. Because if you're not self-examining yourself. You just make your own thing. Because Yahuwah requires people to self-examine themselves. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because he said in scriptures. The hati the hati and whatever the proud will be brought low but the humble will be, will be brought up literally yeah so you gotta suffer something yourself to see where you at you know what I'm saying and by you not doing that you made your own rules <laughs> yeah 
Because you not respecting the rules is you making your own rules. That literally. <laughs> yeah. So, once again, yeah, I do not want to be counted by the people that's doing their own righteousness. Yeah. Because there ain't no righteousness from the men. Righteousness is from above. Yeah. So, let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. Now we want to Luke chapter 16, verse 13 through 14. Luke chapter 16, verse 13 through 14. No servant yeah, can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve Yahuwah and Mammon. Yeah? Let's keep moving. Verse 14. And the Pharisees also, who were covetous, hard, so he heard all these things, and they, dis and they, and they derided him. So, little while I'm trying to get, because that's the story that I'm trying to read, really, truly. Yeah? Uh, I will read you the story of um, uh, Lazarus and uh, what's he called? Uh, Abraham's bosom and all that. Yeah. What's going on in that is that because people are not actually following the whole thing. So when they get to the story of um, uh, Lazarus and, uh, and um, Abraham's bosom and all that, they think that it's a real story. But really and truly, if you if you dip into the script, that's not a real story. You will know because is is Yahusha or what you call Jesus? Yeah, is actually having a speech. He talk. He's talking talking about story and there's a certain crowd of people which is pharisees and you know what I'm saying yeah that the story is directed to them literally yeah so that's why yeah he, he said all these things and then he said that the pharisees that they love money literally, literally love the covetous they love money they love uh what's it called uh things literally they heard what he was saying yeah and uh they hated him they hated yahushua yeah because it was from the truth, yeah. So now the whole story that he's gonna explain on is actually talking to them, but they understand. But it seems like people around and even today, people, <laughs> yeah, they don't understand the story, yeah, because it's it literal, but it's not literal. Let's keep moving, yeah. Another example we want to John chapter 8, verse 37. I know that ye are Abraham's seeds, but ye seek to kill me. Because my word have no place in you. So what's going on here? What I'm trying to do right now is to make you understand. So he's giving his speech and talking in parables, but in a way that the people that he's, ta he's talking about will understand, which are the Pharisees, yeah? But the thing is that the Pharisees, they, they used to like to boast that they were sons of Abraham. Yeah, I need you to understand that before I continue. So that's why I'm born in this song, yeah? And now the script is just confirming that he was telling them that oh you guys are Abraham's seed or whatever because he keeps saying it. <laughs> yeah, but they want to kill him. Continue. Yeah, for John chapter 8, we want verse 39 now. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Yahushua said unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye will do the work of Abraham. Yeah? So the whole beef is that. But the Pharisees and the scribes, they like, they love to, used to love to say that they're sons of Abraham, the brother, and all this stuff. Yeah? So now, when Yahushua is going to talk about this Abraham bottom thing, you're going to understand why. I will explain. Yeah? So, we want Luke, yeah? Chapter 16, verse 13 to 20. Check this out. Check this out. And there were a certain beggar named Lazarus. So right there, this name, Lazarus, is extremely important. Yeah? <clears throat> Which was laid at the gate full of sores. So now I'm on Google. And if you, if you tap uh, Lazarus etymology, etymology is the root of a word. So where a word or name or whatever comes from yeah okay and then you will read right here yeah Lazarus name Lazarus is given name and surname it is derived from the Hebrew Eliezer Eliezer meaning 
God has helped. So, with that being said, yeah, the story is going to make sense and I'm going to explain. Lazarus is literally Eliezer. Lazarus is a transformation in Greek or whatever. Yeah? Eliezer is the Hebrew name. So when you see Lazarus, it means Eliezer. Okay. Okay. Now we go back to the searches. Yeah? And follow me. Lazarus or Lazarus means Eliezer in Hebrew. Right? Now you're going to get it. Genesis chapter 15 verse 2. In Abraham. Uh-huh. Who's talking about Abraham, right? And Abraham said, Yahuwah, your Elohim, what will thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. So, sorry. So, right now, this Eliezer right here is the Lazarus, literally. So, Yahushua is making a story to make people understand something. He's using names that are common because you have we have Abraham and Eliezer, which is literally Lazarus. Lazarus. Yeah? So that's why Yahushua is using Lazarus as a name for his story. But the story is not factual, it's not a real story. Yeah? The Abraham Bosom thing is not real. I'm gonna show it to you. Watch. <coughs> We're gonna start um, pick it up. Yeah, so uh, look, chapter um, 16, now we're going to have verse 21 to 31. And desire, so remember we were talking about this beggar, which was Eliezer, right? Okay. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover, the dog came and licked his sores. Yeah, okay. Keep it moving, verse 22 now. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. So now, the story is factual. Eliezer, which is literally Lazarus, Eliezer was Abraham's servant. Remember when we read in Genesis, Abraham was kind of complaining, kind of, not complaining, but, or should I say begging, the most had to give him something, a son or a descendants because he was going to give everything to his steward his servant which is Eliezer remember the Pharisees they like to say the sons of Abraham yeah they like to say their sons physical sons of Abraham so now when Yahushua is using um, Eliezer as an example, yeah, and he's saying that he's being carried away to Abraham's bosom, he's making a comparison, literally, yeah, he's using it as an example, literally, for his story, because they would, they, they will have known, the Pharisees, who Eliezer is, and also, obviously, they know who Abraham is, so they caught the story, literally, look, Yahushua was an extreme intelligent man, yeah, and I ain't gonna lie, no one can make this up. You need to be very skilled to make these kind of stories. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I know he was the most high. Anyway, <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, uh, the angel into Abraham's bosom, and the rich man also died and was buried. So we understand that a rich man, yeah, also died. Yeah, and then Eliezer or Lazarus was carried to Abraham's bosom. Let's keep it moving. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and see if Abraham afar off, and Lazarus, Lazarus, or Eliezer, yeah, <laughs> in his bosom. Yeah, so what Yahushua is trying to do, is trying to make them understand that they're not going to get to the kingdom, these Pharisees, because they love money. <laughs> yeah, because the rich man literally let me explain. The rich man, yeah, in the story is actually the Pharisees and scribes, yeah. And then Eliezer is any other servant of the Most High. That does, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> all the story is amazing, yeah. 
it's not a real story then there's, there's no such thing as a rain yeah that's not no yeah let's keep moving <clears throat> verse 24 now and he cried and said so the rich man yeah we're talking about yeah and he cried and said father abraham have mercy on me and send lazarus that he may dip the tip of my finger in water and cool my tongue for i am tormented in this flame so yeah who should try to make you understand y'all continuing this thing oh yeah i'm so, I'm so we son of abraham but y'all bad y'all gonna end up in hell yeah and they were pissed off when they were listening to the story literally i'm sure <laughs> yeah verse 25 but abraham said son remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things and likewise lazarus evil things but now he is comforted and thou art tormented yeah so they were trying to make not, not, that, not that sorry uh, yahushua was trying to make understand the pharisees that y'all are gonna end up in hell literally yeah y'all can boast with sons of abraham and all that stuff da, 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 da. but that doesn't mean that y'all are gonna end up in the kingdom of yahuwah or kingdom of heaven yeah ah right. <laughs> cool verse 26 now and beside all this between us and you there is a great goal fixed so that they which will pass from hence to to you cannot neither can they pass to us that would come from hence so he's trying to make them so really yeah who's trying to make the pharisees understand that they're going to end up in hell and there's nothing going to be able to do about it literally yeah 27 now then he said i pray thee therefore father that thou would descend me to my father's house yeah because <laughs> he's trying to make them understand that this is what's going to happen really like y'all think you're going to go to the heaven but it's not what's going to happen yeah but calm down the abraham bottom thing does not exist but he's trying to make them understand something this story right here it's a parable it's not actual real yeah in this case we should believe that uh jesus there is like what's the name uh 10 virgin waiting for, for him yeah but that's not the case <laughs> anyway uh look chapter 16 verse 28 yeah or verse 28 shall i say for i have five brethren that he may testify unto them lest they also come into this place of torment so now he's trying to make them understand with continuing the story he's trying to actually make them understand that that they should repent literally because the moral of the story is that this rich man, which is literally in real life, the Pharisees, he understands that he's in hell now and then he wants his families or his his relative to not come to that place that he is. Yeah. So he's being nice to them. He's making them understand that they can still repent. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> verse 29 now, Abraham saith unto him, they have Moses and the prophets, lest they hear them. Yeah. <clears throat> verse 30 now and he said nay father abraham but if one went unto them from the dead they will repent you know what i'm saying but that right here was a foreshadow of what it was going to was going to do yeah the resurrection yeah but anyway i don't want to get into it <laughs> yeah because it's double sense this thing yeah and it's trying to ask, oh, oh yeah, also he's trying to say that, look, even if someone will repent from, come come back from the dead, they won't leave, they won't listen. Literally. But that's, whatever. Verse 31 now. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they he, will they be persuaded, the one rose from the dead. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, this word is beautiful. Yeah. So, the whole, um, moral of the story is that do not be boasting or do not be showing off because you're righteous or whatever this is not what you're supposed to do humbleness is the best yeah because the ones that are boasting and proud fool they will be brought low they're going down but the people that's humble they're the one that's going to receive the cup you know what i mean yeah, so gotta be careful. Gotta be careful. Yeah. 
All right, so let's continue. Now we want John, or First John, chapter one, verse eight. So First John, yeah, or First Yahukanan, chapter one, verse eight, and we read: If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So if y'all say, "Yeah, I'm so perfect," or whatever, da, 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 nah. You're a liar. Yeah? You're a big time liar. Yeah? Let's continue. We want Ephesians chapter 5 verse 9. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Yeah? That is all you need. All you need. Verse 10. Providing what is it acceptable unto Yahuwah. Yeah. We'll jump back to verse 8. Yeah. Of Ephesians chapter 5. For ye were sometimes in darkness. But now are ye light in Yahuwah. Walk as children of light. So. The whole thing I was trying to say. Yeah. You were. You were in darkness. Now you're in light. You can't be playing with both. Yeah? There's no middle ground in that. You understand? So, that's the whole purpose of this lesson. To make y'all understand that we have to self examine ourselves. Yeah? And I want y'all to finish with this one. Yeah? We're going to close this lesson with that. And I think it's one of the most beautiful scriptures of the world. <laughs> yeah. And that's uh, Luke chapter 18, verse 9 to 14. Yeah. Luke chapter 18, verse 9 to 14. And read. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else. You see, the whole point of the, of the story, of this lesson, just say. <laughs> yeah. Yahushua yeah, told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee, yeah, he used to like he used to love to be on Pharisees, but anyway, let me continue. And the other a tax collector. The Pharisees stood by himself and prayed, Elohim, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evil doers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. <laughs> I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all that I get. Yeah, that's a lot like from people that I know today. But anyway. But a tax collector stood at a distance. It would not even look up to heaven, but beat his own breast and said, Elohim, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the, the other man, went home justified before Elohim. For all those who exalt themselves will be humble, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. So that was the whole point of the story, y'all. Yeah? Have a nice Shabbat. And remember, let's be like this other man that just asked for mercy. And let's not be like the Pharisees that just say that they're perfect when in reality they're not. So self-examination is the key. So have a nice day of rest. Shabbat Shalom.